Doki, Doki. G'day guys, it's Jara here and welcome to Doki Doki Lucha Club. So I thought I'd get back into this and just kind of play a bit and see how we go. So back into making this poem. So we're going to go for Yuri, which is the purple hair girl who's shy, a little bit quiet, maybe self-harms, we don't know. Monica seems a bit weird. I think she knows that she's in a video game. And I think that's all I know so far about the characters. We'll find out more when we continue playing. So, let's see. She's a very, like, even though she's quiet, she's very much like, I'm sentimental and quiet and doki donkey. I don't know what doki doki means, but she, pink, I can't remember her name. She creeps me out. Captive. See, if I do tragic, it just does hurt. So, I kind of want to figure out, she's... I reckon there's more to her than it seems. So... I want to see milk, because it's just me. <laughs> I love milk. I was just drinking milk, actually. Um, explode. Hair. Death. See, like, you know what I mean? She jumps for death, even though she's a super happy character. Which I find kind of weird. Secretive. Destiny. Philosophical, intellectual, disarray, calm. Because I want to make sure it's kind of like all would like it, even though some might like it more than others. So I don't want to pick like all stuff she'll like. I do want to mix it a bit. Vivid and broken. And melody. Because I, I love the name Melody. Oh man. I'm sorry if the voice has changed slightly. I don't remember it's in a while. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked into. Time to bring the microphone closer to me. Were you practicing piano again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion? Remember that? Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you all. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out with the festival too. Like we get a choice. Ah, I can't wait for the festival! <laughs> it's gonna be great! Huh? Weren't you complaining about it yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of whole day of school where we all get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. Yay! You sounded a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? I didn't say I didn't like it. Besides, what do you mean, you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica? Uh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. What the hell is she talking about? I don't really understand. Oh my god, why is she so weird? Why is she saying like that? Oh my god, is it a jar? I'm so questioning life decisions. Uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't funny as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where's Sayori anyway? Oh, there you go. Sayori, come here. Sayori! Sayori! Stop sleeping. Let's go. Come on. Sayori is sitting at the desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Hello, Sayori. Puppies, unicorns, rainbows. 
Why do you look sad? Huh? Huh? You spaced out again. <laughs> uh, sorry. Don't don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything okay? Uh, of course. Why why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little bit off. Like you know something or something bad's about to happen. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? <laughs> Zuri shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so, what the hell? I worriedly glance at Siri before turning back towards everyone else. What is going on? She is having a bad day? Is what I want to assume. But I don't know. But the conversation has already dis dispersed with everyone back at their usual activity. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Suri recently. Since they've been preparing the festival, they must have spent a lot of time together. I timidly approached Monica, who was shuffling through some papers at her desk. Jara, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything with Suri recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? See, like, that I find weird. Like, I know that some people are quite oblivious to words that different cultures say, like, what is up with her. But that's, like, kind of a generic thing, like, oh, you know, what's up? So if I heard her be like, oh, what does that mean? I feel like that she's really not part of this world. I feel like she's more, she knows she's, like, I've discovered that she does know she's in a video game. But everyone else is acting like it's a normal school, right? So I predict that she's kind of like, yes, I know I'm part of a, a computer and that didn't compute in my head how to program that. In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into this a little bit too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. What the hell is downcast? Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. I don't know why I give her a British accent, but I do. Monica peers around the room at Siri, who is eerily dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Rubber eraser. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Jara. You certainly know a lot. I know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. And I just thought, you know, maybe it's a female thing. I don't know. Because I'm a guy, apparently. She always talked to me about things that bother her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try to talk to her myself. Huh? Are you sure about that? You're not going to, like, freak out? She seems like she wants to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Jara. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sari talks about you more than anyone else, you know. Eh? Yeah, well, duh, we're best friends. Best friends always talk about their best friends more. She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sari is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine and rainbows and lollipops. It's not any different now than it's always been. Eh? <sighs> You're so funny, Jara. Have you thought that maybe you'll always see her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Oh, Sarah has a crush on me! Mm. <sighs> I've said too much. I'm sorry. What do, I do, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to the conclusion, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to forget her words. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room where Siri is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Siri and gently talk to her. 
but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sarah, you told me not to worry about her and have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Best friends stick up for best friends. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Is that the game? Okay, that was weird. That was just... I have this phone, right, that goes off randomly, but we we just kind of found this phone and it's been ringing every once in a while and people just start ringing it left, right, and center and they're like, oh, can we speak to this person? We're like, yeah, that's not the, you know, th they don't exist or like, you know, they're not here anymore. So we just kind of don't know what to do. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm learning this way and you so down? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary, but there's nothing I can do to decide to wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly I notice Yuri peering at me from over a book, but she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. Literally me, I don't like to start conversations with people. And even if I do, I'm always like, so, what the hell do I say? Because I'm one of those people like, you need to talk to me first because I wouldn't know what to say. I can look confident, but I can't start a goddamn conversation. I'm very much an introvert when it comes to that. I'll be like, no one talk to me. I'll talk to you unless you talk to me, but I won't talk to you. And and, and I this is why I relate so much to Yuri as a character because I'm always like, yes, I don't talk. I would be stuck on my book than my phone. Things like this, I have a lot of connections with her. So I have no choice but to approach her. By now it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in the one next to her. Uh, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't even do anything. I literally just came and sat next to you. So don't tell me how to live my life. Oh, so sorry headphone users. I'm so sorry. Oh, why microphone? Why did you fool? Because this side isn't tightened enough. I'm so sorry all headphone users bloody microphone falling but I could tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts alone with my thoughts okay how delusional of a character am I I get the whole factor of being alone with your thoughts I do that all the time how are you able to tell it just from the I was thinking like that well it's something that I do a lot Yuri is me Yuri is me but sh she has purple hair and I have a bigger as the girls say, chest in this game. I'd actually wear that if the skirt was a bit longer and I wasn't in an anime. If I wasn't in an anime. So it wasn't hard for me to spot based on your posture and expression. N not that I was like, staring at you or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. Oh, Lord have mercy. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. D don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who are willing shared willingly shared in that concern. Of course, there are certain things those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. Yeah. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. <laughs> it's not really that big of a deal, I'm just worried about Sari. Just feeling about, a bit uneasy about Sayori. <laughs> Sayori? Yeah, she seemed a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. That's quite romantic. Huh? Why does everyone think we're together? We're just friends. S -s -s Sorry. I, I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sorry and I have been friends for a long time, that's all. Huh. <sighs> I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just really getting into this a little too much. Jara. The world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. That I love. I'm actually going to write that down. That is a beautiful quote. I want to write that down and then put it on my Twitter. So if you see that, go retweet it. Twitter in the description below. Except I am writing really fast it's gonna look horrible the world is full of meaning 
Uh, thin. Oh, that's a. I can't spell either, even if it's right in front of me. Hid. Hidden. Deep. I'm really much into like poetry and quotes, so seeing stuff like this, where I'm like, oh, that's a beautiful quote. I gotta write that down. So I have my Instagram and Twitter and Tumblr's full of quotes because I'm just obsessed with quotes and I find them so beautiful. My room has quotes. It's just, I love them so much. I find them so beautiful and I can relate to them, especially if it's something like, I'm trying to think of one I reposted. One I just thought was really, really hilarious that I reposted. It was like, Fruit Loops are the gay version of Cheerios. And I thought that was absolutely hilarious. So I like reposted that on Tumblr and I think I put that on my Instagram as well. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you know them. Okay, this room is possessed, I swear to god, there's like paper just started randomly falling. <laughs> so you think there might be something behind it after all? Mm-hmm. I think that Siri is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. Just remember that, please. I'm going to stop for a second. Please remember that. No matter how simple the person may look, there's so much more going on inside their head. There's so much more complex and thoughts and feelings and emotions are running around their head that it's just like... See, when you think of the movie Inside Out, if you've seen it, if you haven't seen it, basically it's like different islands for certain things and there's little people running around controlling your emotions. Mine, I feel like, is just, there's a person sitting in an empty room, and they're just riding all over the walls. And whenever they want, they'll hit a button, or they'll lock something, and that's how my brain functions. It likes to be very methodical, and I feel like my brain is half black, and the other half is, like, kind of white, but when you look at a certain angle, it's quite colourful. So it's like a giant prism on one side, the other side is just an empty void. That's how I see my brain. Like if I had to like visualize it in some way other than like, oh, it's this mushy thing. My mind is like that. So everyone is more complex than they seem. And she may not always know what she wants. I know her strange behavior today too, I noticed. Can't read English. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looks like she was fully occupying your thoughts wasn't she well like I've been saying best friends if they are in trouble in need they take up all of your time if they say something bad you go think about it a lot I guess that was the case Sayori she really means a lot to you doesn't she uh, I guess so. again she's my best friend but you don't need to put it in that way we're just good friends that's all Hmm. Yuri Sani looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware you had in the first place. That, that, that is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple guy. See, I'm a guy in this. So, I probably could have told me I was a guy and I would have been. That's my straight away guy name. So, I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. Guys never understand your own feelings. They don't understand their own feelings, nor do they understand anyone else's feelings. I don't have a boyfriend or anything, but like I see guys, I have friends who are guys, and I'm like, how do you function as a social person? Like my brain just goes into distort, and I'm like, you don't understand anything. Like one of my guy friends, he has a girlfriend and stuff, and like we were chatting and all of this, and I'm like, the things that you do are sweet, yet stupid. I'm not as nearly sophisticated as you. Damn right. <laughs> That's not a compliment, isn't it? It is what it is. Now I'm popular-ish. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. 
Yeah, I love reading. I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Why don't you go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? No, no, just don't drug me. Thank you very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. I love tea. Give me some of that chai. A chai latte is good. But going into teas, give me chamomile tea. Give me an English breakfast. I am good. Yuri stands up and make her way towards the closet. I follow and watch her as she retrieves a small water pitch from the shelf. The kind that has a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. Oh, I missed, I missed, I missed, I missed. Ah, I'm sorry. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and, and also fetches an electric kettle. Oh, I'm just... I'm going to, I'm going to plug this in the teacher's desk and then we'll get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking matters. Especially because of her long legs, Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. <laughs> I might as well walk with you, keep you company. Yeah, why not? Shall we go then? Yeah. Hmm. Where are you two off to now? Uh, we're just... Yuri was going to make some tea, so... It's only how I realise how weird it is... How weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just filling the water pitcher. Ah, okay. So I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... Monica, please, mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell me that there's something wrong with helping involve Jara into club activities. <sighs> My mouth gasps. <gasps> I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> then let's go, Jara. <laughs> Yuri quietly exits the room and I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, it, I just, it's fine. I just, sometimes, something about the way she said that, it made me feel so irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri, nothing is wrong with you. I think, I think, I think, I think, I think, I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but it's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Chara, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because nothing you do is bad as you make it seem in your head. Oh, so she has anxiety. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions and we can't always hide them away. This game full of quotes, hell yeah. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. War one poetic. <laughs> n n no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? Hate's such a strong word. You just dislike. I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend? Y you say? <laughs> Yuri lifts her head. Jara, I really like being friends with you. <laughs> Thanks, Yuri. It, it means a lot. I like being friends with you too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that, but I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah, let's go. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return to the classroom. Jara, do you like oolong tea? Oh, sorry. Jara, do you like oolong tea? Uh, yeah. Never had oolong tea, but sure. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kale to 200 degrees. That's probably actually not hot. But, because I see degrees is 20 degrees Celsius, which is what it is for me. That's hot. That's hot. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do anything less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert at tea or anything. Uh-huh. In that case, you want to be even more impressed. <laughs> Perhaps I will. I assume that tea is a very, like, cultural thing when it comes to Japan. And 
I don't want to be rude, but I want to say this is like a Japanese type game. I want to say, well, like Asia, where that tea is kind of like, oh, we offer this as like a warming gift or like a friendship gift. I'm not really sure. Yuri fetches a teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show, and you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around anyway. She has a crush on me. She has a crush on me. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worried about me, Jara. I'm just worried about everyone because everyone seems to be on the close of the mental case. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I want Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Jara, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Yes, please! I love sitting on the floor. Literally ask any of my friends. I always sit on the floor. Huh? Why's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have bad. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Why do we relate way too much? Lily, I have back pain on a constant level, and I think I know where she's going with this based on what she's saying. If it is what I think she's say about to say, then I have to say, girl, I'm going to relate to you in a second. <laughs> is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because of my... <sighs> my... Your posture, right? <laughs> Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes. I have a terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. Oh my god, that's not why. It's not because of posture. It's not because of posture. And I was right. Let's just say it ain't about the posture, okay? The girl's chest, when heavy, hurts you back a lot. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Siri's candy radar. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. Tea and chocolate. You and I s then sit against the wall, teacup at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see you too well. Hmm? Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less appre apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding with my hands that's not holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Is that something guys really stress about? Ooh, I better not touch her chest. Ooh. I guess like in primary primary school and middle school, it would be a big deal. But like in high school, if someone accidentally did that, I'd be like, and they said sorry, I'd be like, it's fine, you didn't mean to. You didn't grab it, so it's fine. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume that, that the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. Hmm. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. <laughs> Sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Uh, that's... that's okay. I won't take any. Huh? Are you sure? You don't want to take any chocolate because you might... Your worry's going to dirty the book, aren't you? Well, if I touch it, then I might get smudges on the paper. Hell yeah! Called it! She's a, she's a bookie! She's a bookie! Bookie, man! All book people don't want to ruin their books. Like especially with chocolate. Chocolate is so hard to get out of. I one time was reading one of my books, and I remember I was walking to class, and this was in year 8, 9, and I dropped my book. And it was raining, right? In a big puddle. And I got so mad. I freaked out. Threw my other books. Like, all my school books. Grabbed this book I was reading. And it was half drenched. And I ran to the bathroom. And was drying it. And I was, like, freaking out. Because I was like, oh, no, I can't read it. <sighs> I got so upset. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. 
no need to apologize i'll hold the book okay oh hang up are you sure of course oh that's pretty you opens the book with both hands she holds it so i don't have any any harder time of reading from any heart any harder of a time reading from it. As a result, her left arm is practically resting on my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy pop in her mouth. Then I take another chocolate. And I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop here. I place the chocolate in her mouth, just like that Yuri closes her lips over it. Uh-huh. Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. <sighs> um, Jara. S sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. <sighs> That's, well, you were just helping. That's something that friends do, right? I mean, not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Like, I, I have to say this right now. I love the way this is drawn to, like, everything. I love how, like, all the little particles are falling and the way that her hair. I just really like this shot. It's a beautiful shot right here of just, like, her staring and looking worried. But, like, it's still, like, a nice, soft picture. I don't know. I like it. Yeah. Then you don't need to stop or anything. I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book. But I can tell just by her expression that she can't even focus now. My heart is pounding. Like, look at that. Look at that. That is a beautiful photo, I have to think. I think that's very beautiful. Okay. I know if you take knowledge piece of chocolate. Does anyone else not notice that I'm feeding this girl chocolate? This time Yuri's eyes meet mine. Mm. How did he even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breath. Okay. Eyes up, boy. I raise my arm. Uh. Right before Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. I feel a hot breath on my fingers. Oh, okay everyone. <laughs> Yuri dots back. It's time to share poems. Jara, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Yeah, of course. Y yeah, right. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. Uh, I'll, I'll take care of the cups. Yeah. Yuri picks up the teacups from the floor. Ooh, ooh. I pick up the bag of chocolates. In the end, we hastily clean up without so much of a conversation. I get the feeling that this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Who show the farm to? Poem. Yay! Hmm. Jara. This is wonderful. I can feel the emotions that you poured into it. Is this the result of trying what I suggested yesterday? Yeah, I guess so. You did a good job explaining. I really want to give him more feeling. Yuri visibly swallows. Mm -hmm. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? We're literally having a conversation right here. Uh, I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Just breathe. <sighs> Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I offer that patience to her. Yeah. Just... Being appreciated like this, I guess. This probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really? I don't believe it. God, that was Aussie. I don't believe it, mate. I really, I really only write for myself. And besides, people would just laugh at me. Girl, I know how you feel. I've written, I've written one of my own poems. It's upstairs somewhere, actually. I had to do it for a school project. And I got, like, a B plus, and I felt so heartbroken. I was like, my heart and soul went into that. And you, 
and it was a B and my heart shattered and I was like I thought I did so well and I remember I was like oh I'm gonna show my friend I'm gonna show my friend and I never did because I was like what if she laughs at me what if she doesn't like it because it did talk about her a bit in it not a bit but like it had themes in it that we both shared together as friends so I didn't want to like pressure her so it was kind of an awkward situation do you really think that again Yuri nods huh even your closest friend hmm for some reason Yuri doesn't respond Yuri Yuri smiles sadly Jara during lunchtime I eat by myself do you know that it's a great time to find a quiet spot to do some reading in fact I always have some books with me you could say I really enjoy reading well that's one way to put it anyway but books are so full of amazing inspiring people people you want to fall in love with or perhaps you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who would always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. She described why I love books so much. It takes you into a world of fantasy that you wish... You, you know, it's like an escape. Some people go on social media for an escape. Or use YouTube as an escape, as like I do sometimes. But reading a book is an escape that... I love so much because you're reading about the characters, you're knowing more about them, and the more and more books you read, the more, like if it's a series, the more books you read, the more and more you understand about the character, the more you might relate or understand why they did a certain thing, which way in life you never will. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me, they don't tease me for spacing out all the time, they don't make fun of my body type. And, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. <sighs> Shoot. It's hard. You know, because you do get judged for your body type. Oh, you're too fat. Oh, your chest is too big. Oh, you know, this and that. Oh, I wish I had that. Oh, I want to, if I cut this much fat off of you, you'd still be really fat. Or, oh, if I even cut half of your chest size, you would still have bigger chest than me. And it's like, really? Telling someone they're fat repeatedly isn't helpful. Telling someone that their chest is too big for them isn't a good thing to hear on a constant level. Hearing stuff like that, it, it does chip away at you slowly. To the degree where you like, look in the mirror and it's like, I need to change so people will stop calling me these things so Yuri yeah I do relate to you way too much actually it kind of sad really it's kind of sad because she is so much like me she's timid and quiet when I'm with my friends I'm a bit louder but She's timid and quiet and she's worried that she doesn't want to upset people. She can go off and be so apologetic for it after. It's it's sad. God. People say that about you? I know. I'm not a know-it-all, Jara. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. Oh my god, that's the same. <laughs> I don't know how to make people see me as normal. What's normal? I don't even know how to make myself happy. That, Yuri, I've just learned how to do recently. This year, actually. You just gotta surround yourself by happiness and happy people and happy thoughts. That's why I love quotes and books so much. You know, and fairy lights. It's happiness why I've given up dance, you know, why I'm going to pursue doing things and that, why I want to change what I've been doing lately, because I want to make myself happy and this is what I'm learning to do. I have all these feelings and all I can do with them is read and write, but it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time, but I haven't really done anything. 
no, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful, that's really important to me. I know I'm a difficult person, Jara. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. That's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I have at l I would I would say I have at least one success, wouldn't you? Mm, um if, if you put it that way. Yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in my hands, but this time she's smiling as she does. Do you want me to show you my poem? Yeah, I do. Let me oh, you want to show me your poem. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, when the womb of the earth catastrophically met the surface, under a clear blue sky, an expansion of bliss, but beneath grey rolling clouds, an endless and Juma, I can't read, the easiest world to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet but when the sand is wet the tide comes will it get will it get wet lick will it gently lick at your foundation until you give in or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in a blink of an eye either way the outcome is the same yet we still build a sand castle no okay i read this poem right it's called chasing the time and yeah literally one of my the like in you know how this is like in paragraphs one of the endings of my paragraphs is yet we're still chasing the time that's scary i stand where the foam wraps around my ankles where my toes squish in the sand and i wrote one about the beach the salty air is therapeutic breeze is gentle yet powerful i sink my toes into the ultimate bounty line tempted by the foaming tentacles tendrils sorry Turn back and I abandon my peace to enjoy the show. Drifting forward, I return to the earth forevermore. Damn, I love that. Um, I'm aware the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about, but I did my best to make a mer metaphorical approach to it. You sound like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Nuzuki and I, well, it was... Amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Nozuki wanted to write about the same topic as each other again. I suppose to better compare the difference in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it was not not surprised that she wanted to do something like that. So she probably just wanted to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But. Well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know. It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I agree. Thank you for sharing that. It probably took a lot. So I want to go with Monica, then Siri, then Nezuki. I don't really like Nezuki. Hi, Jara! <laughs> Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it will turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's have a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding my hand. That's another thing as well, like Ryan writing the poem, there's only three characters, she's not there. Hmm, this one's good. It feels like you're not getting more comfortable with, not only getting, more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I ran. Just running, wondering, but have you find inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Hmm? I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yes, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. She seems very fluent. Or, 
when she's talking about lit literacy, it's like a light's turned on inside her. Mm -hmm. Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I've tried. Who knows what's going on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. It just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much. But still, defending her like that, you must be pretty into her. Huh? You completely misunderstood. <laughs> Calm down, I'm kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she's already got a boyfriend. Wait, really? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh my god, I'm sounding like me when I talk to my friends. One of my friends has a fictional husband, and it's like, why? Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. <laughs> anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. Okay, lady who knows everything. An old tale of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift the sky, victim of the current of the wind. Day after day I search. A search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twindle sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow, I fall, and I fall and I fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between, between the thumb and the forefinger, a hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eye and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found the answer. I found every answer of which amounts to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat and I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are sort of things that gives life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put that much thought into it. And anyway, it's almost paradox. Because if we all had the answers, we would, wouldn't we start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I've noticed. It seems like everyone in this club prefers to write about things that are more sad than happy. Everyone seems depressed. <sighs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. See, that part, I don't know, I find that way, humans, humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. Why wouldn't she just write, we are not two-dimensional creatures? I think you, you'd known that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? <laughs> yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip for the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something. Thing you put so much into but if you find other people who enjoy your writing then sharing becomes a lot easier because instead of just sorry instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad they want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on it's much more than encouraging that way and it'll make you want to continue improving it's almost like having your own literacy club don't you think that's my advice for the day thanks for listening <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. <laughs> Come on, I can already, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Huh? I didn't write this for anyone specific. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. <laughs> but okay. You're making new friends just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. <laughs> That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Jara. Sayori, is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright. 
Just tell me if you need anything. God, I'm not all here. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I'm gonna go home a bit, a little bit early today. Sorry. Tell me I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Before I can say anything, Siri chiefly walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. <laughs> this one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. About as good as yesterday's, anyway. I see what you're going for, but it's not really my style. I mean, that's, that's fine. We didn't get to read her poem. The, the, a series. I'm mostly just glad you're trying out a little bit. Well, of course, at least I'm trying. Why are you so emotionally invested in my poems, anyway? Isn't that more of, of a compliment to me? Huh? <laughs> no, girls, ugh. It's not like that I care. It's just that one of us in the club has to make sure you're not sucking off. Really? Well, what if you ended up just scaring me away? That's, um... <coughs> <coughs> it's not like you would actually do that. Yeah, you're right. It's kind of fun to hang out here, even if I have to put up with you. Is <coughs> it Elbows connect with my stomach. Uh. Maybe I won't mind scaring you off after all. I was just joking. <coughs> oh, I know. Don't worry, I was too. <laughs> How the hell do you call that a joke? That seriously hurt. Well, maybe it was funny to her. I guess that's kind of the point. I should really just watch my mouth around Nozuki. Anyway, Nozuki holds her palm out to me like nothing happened. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that, that diminish diminishes your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place. A beach for us to go. A short reaching beyond your sight a, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light sorry I'm just trying to see something the walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow I'll be by the beach that washes your worries away I'll be the beach that makes your daydream about each day I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way though have you in a way, though, had left you long ago. Let, let's let bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see your sunshine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail. trail. Set, your free, set you free in the windy sea. And remember that reason you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be by the witch washing your worries away. This is like a song. I'll be by the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be by the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought you had left long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you learn to love yourself again. Yeah. I feel like I keep writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the message is awesome. Kind of hard to write with anything negative about the beach. Well, yours is a little bit more solemn. Well, that's Gee, she better not have anything bad to say about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Ugh. You can't really see her doing that. Make us write about simple topics and trying to impress me by coming up with something fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. But that's nothing wrong to do with once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Wait, so who wanted to write? Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange right now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You debated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even you isn't immune to it. Yeah. Stagnating air is common for a shame that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe? Look, the only thing different is that Siri isn't here. Uh, it seems you're right. <sighs> Siri always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the hell did she run up to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. 
Hazuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on! Actually, she wasn't feeling too well, went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? All the times not to go home with how you had to pick the time she's not feeling well? So is she too being all lovey-dovey? Uh, no! First off, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. Underline, friendship. And second, she's kind of been avoiding you today, so I didn't want to force it. Huh? That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. I told her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Nozuki will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them, different flavors. Can you handle them all by yourself, Nozuki? Challenge accepted! <laughs> And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling the poetry plant fits. So you will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... Mm -mm. Yuri, you can... Uh, um, uh, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I... I'm useless. No, no! That's not it at all! You're the most talented person here, you know! Hum... Now, now, Niz N now, Nizuki pouting too? Jeez, jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Siri enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder when she's not around. Ah, that may be the case. But if I also can't be Leo on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere. Rue's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Jara. One who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Nozuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. I would, it would probably go a long way to give them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I really, really appreciate that of you. Uh, that's... Is one of those suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to that suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bathe, there's always some dirty work I could give you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, or you should be sitting on your own butt. If you can try to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Jaro may not like to be around you if you only make him be out to be a nuisance, so therefore, he may be more suitable to assign with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard can it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making an excuse for Jaro to- What are you saying? It would be extremely medic- Medicuses work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys. Let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Jar to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in- You literally just said- I I'm surprised as well. Sorry, s sorry, sorry. I was just saying that- Jeez! Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Jar, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. <laughs> Very well. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course I'm going with... Give Sarah some space. I really haven't spent any time with Monica, but I do want to, like, kind of hang with Yuri the most. So I'm going to go with Yuri. Well, I'll probably be most useful at helping out with Yuri. Me? Are you serious? Why would you... Natsuki. I can already tell you about something. You better say something mean. N no. I was just saying. Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Jara? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sort of things. So I think your your assistance would be very useful. That's great to hear, everyone. Nusuki, you'll be able to handle the baking by yourself. I mean, yeah. I already said it would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Nusuki is feeling a little sour. So, is everything we need to go over? 
Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word, but I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Jara? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it turns out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Nazuki? Hum! Nazuki! What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything! No, that's not what I meant at all. <laughs> Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Jara picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so, so... I get it, I get it! I'm kind of surprised, though. Why? Um, well, I'm the only one acting immature. And I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Nozuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back by Yuri's words. Yeah, she looks really taken back. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No! I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing, but I'm going to say that this. Hmm? You better, you better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah. I hope to see everyone doing their best. But with that, there's something. There's nothing more for today, so I guess it's time for us to head out. All right, let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Uzuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um, eh? I turn around. Sorry, I realize I don't have any way of con contract contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Cool. Alright then, you and I exchange phone numbers. Okay, then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Eh? My house? I is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought it would be... The one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I'd prefer going to your house. Alright. Why? Either she lives in a lower class and doesn't want me to see because she's worried, or she's getting abused by her parents. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decided not to pressure Yuri for that reason. It's not like it should matter either way, so I just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Uh, hold on, let me just fix my hat. There we go. Don't underestimate yourself, Jara. I think that will make a very productive team, even if you only choose me because you felt bad or something. Wait, you don't actually think that, do you? Um, I, I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any reason that you may have chosen me. You're forgetting one of the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I wanted to do. But, but... Yuri thinks to herself with an extreme tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking things, right? Huh? I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah, I am too. After that exchange, I make my way to the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday. My anxiety shoots through the roof. Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is that a chance? Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off of it. I seriously can't wait. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself that there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri's clearly an introvert, and also an inter intimidating person is in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when she's just when it's just the two of us. If Jared could read English, that would be better, or speak it. Meanwhile, 
We've even been texting occasionally. She was extremely appreciative at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard anything from Sarius since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sarius said and what Monica said. Sorry. It is really, is it really okay for me to put Sarius feelings aside when she might need me? Ooh, Sarius house is pretty. I decided to visit Sarius before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sarius house, I knock on the door before entering in myself. Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Suri isn't anywhere in the first floor, so I assume she's in her room. It's very really strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom when I finally find her. Suri? Hi, Jara! <laughs> I sit down in her room. Suri forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? <laughs> Siri's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. It's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to be seeing Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? So you really left by the time we decided at that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? I guess that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep! There's more silence between us. So he stands in a random direction. Everything about her behaviour is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something was wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well, so... So you smile, shaking her head. That's not good, Jara. <laughs> huh? Well, it can't just be like it was always been. This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally expressing my feelings, if I didn't make this, that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this... This is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. I just wanted it just wanted to talk to me. <laughs> Sorry. I grabbed Sorry by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something's happening to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this, so tell me already. Until I know I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Uh <sighs> so he gives me an empty smile. You really put me into a trap, Jara, but you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You were just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sari? Just tell me! <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Jara? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm so late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why I go to school? Why eat? Why I make friends? Why I make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spread it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. What an emotional episode, man! Damn, this is emotional. <sighs> I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Siri kept this from me the entire time I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me just to not talk about her? Why, Sayori? <sighs> Why is it you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much I can do. This is what friends do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. 
and you have to do what you have tell me these things you don't understand Jara why do you think I didn't tell you because if I told you you would have wasted an effort caring about me instead of doing important things I don't want to be cared about it's bittersweet when people try to care about me it feels nice sometimes but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head <laughs> that's why I wanted to bally for you to make friends with everyone else helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me but then I discovered something else too seeing you make friends with everyone and get close in the club it feels like a sphere going through my heart so that's why that's why I've decided the world just wants to torture me every path leads to nothing but hurt <laughs> you're right I don't understand I don't understand why you're feeling at all your feelings at all Sayori but I don't need to understand Whatever it takes for me to help stop hurting, that's what I'll do. Okay. I've had a similar conversation to someone like this. What are you say now? Guys, please don't keep your feelings bottled up. It hurts way too much. I know what it feels like to have, you know, every conversation. Having a friend come to me and be like, I've got, you know, I'm bipolar and I have self harm and I've. You know, I could see them slowly relie feeling relieved about it. And yes, I did overreact and I apologise to her every single time I see her. And it's been like five years since an incident happened. But I still keep, you know, I she knows I'm there for her. I message her constantly being like, I hope you're okay. You know, now that I know she seems happier, she looks better. She seems more alive. She just... Back to when I used to know her before she used to tell you one, she always seemed sad, dark rings on her eyes, and she always used to be scared. Now, she's bright and happy, she's more cheerful, she seems to be herself more, and she's never looked better. So please, I'm saying this, for the love of God, do not keep your emotions bottled up. If you have something like depression, anxiety, tell a friend, tell a parent, tell someone, because they can help you. You have no idea how hard it is to just, I know you guys think it's so hard and it's so easy just to keep it bottled up, but I swear to you, I promise to God, it is easier if you tell someone you trust, tell your best friend, tell someone you really truly trust and they will be there for you. And if not, they don't deserve to be in your life. You need to tell someone trust in people have trust because I cannot say it enough keeping emotions bottled up doesn't help it only makes it worse because your brain makes everything everything seem worse than it was your brain makes everything magnified four bajillion times you could be like oh look I hurt myself today but your brain could be saying that you're useless because you couldn't stand when you fell when it wasn't that at all. Your brain is your worst enemy, but you need to fight it. You need to talk to people. Please, guys, just help each other out. Talk to each other. Be friends. Just don't leave yourself bottled up in a mess like this. I don't want to see anyone have this conversation. People should be seeing their friends and being like, yes, I have depression. I have anxiety. I have PTSD. I have you know, dyslexia, or SLD, or anything, anxiety, I self-harm, anything, telling someone makes it better, and I promise to dear God, all the gods in the heavens, and your friends and family, I promise you as a human and an individual, it does help. Please, talk to anyone, if you don't trust your friends or family, talk to a kid's helpline, or a helpline of some description, a doctor, a psychologist, a nurse, a counsellor, a school counsellor, talk to anyone you feel comfortable with, a teacher if needed to, talk to someone, talk to me if needed to, talk, talking can be so helpful, it can be painful to talk, but I promise it will help. Getting back to the story, there is, there is nothing, nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped us is, is everything could be like it was, but I was selfish. 
I finally showed you what a horrible person I was. Tears rolled down Siri's face. I made you join the lit literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart, hurting in a way I couldn't understand. And now I came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. And that's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once grabbed Suri's shoulders. This time I pulled her into a tight embrace. Ah, Jara! Suri, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Jara. Sarah isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sarah's arms remain at her side. She starts sobbing next to my ear. <laughs> no, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Jara. <laughs> Sarah manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know what I'm doing right now. If I'm doing is the right thing. But all I want to know is that I care for her. I want her to know is I care for her. If you had it if you had it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. If there's anything you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sarah finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Jaro. The only thing I'm feeling no is feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain, but a oh, hug is so warm, and that really scares me too. Sarah lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it? How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh, it's what I want. I promise. I, I think it would be nice then. Yeah. Sorry, wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all the days, this had to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, I don't cancel. Pl please don't. If you did, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But... It's almost time for Yuri to meet at my house. And at the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Yuri shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if it would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? <laughs> Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Suri and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep things about it when Yuri's about to come over. I think Suri is right. I shouldn't be worried too much, but we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's going on ahead. I approach my house and I see something that makes me a moment of panic. Yuri? <sighs> oh, turn it. Thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I, j I just got here. But I said, get really nervous and nobody answered the doorbell. You could have always texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried my more on my way home. I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be more common sense to do that, but I said, ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked for you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. I take Yuri to my room. This is a nice looking room. The first thing she does is glance around cur curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so that's very considerate of you. Uh, no. My mom would just be like, what? Clean your room jar! If you don't clean your room jar, then you got no friends coming over. Honey, how many times have I got to tell you that? And what did I tell you? We have guests coming over that are having dinner, and then they are leaving. So clean your room, because God forbid, we might be eating dinner in your room. Who knows? Because, you know, 
All of my friends come and eat dinner and then leave, but never go upstairs, so your room must be spotless. Parody. I'd be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. While well, I do enjoy cleaning, I would have glad you helped you clean. <laughs> That'd be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look at- I snatched his wrist, which is in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Ah! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine. It's fine. And let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both her hands firmly in her lap, as if she's making sure to keep track of them. So, um, should we get started? Uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you could help with. Decorations and other atmosphere enhancements. Atmosphere enhancements? You know, mood lining, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you'd plan on taking it that far. Of course. I wanted to help take the guests to a faraway place. Although, many will stop by just out of cur curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. That's great! It's easy to forget that you're in a pretty intense person. Uh... Intense? I guess that's the best way of putting it. Is that a bad thing? Not at all! It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Sit, chill, relax. Relax? I brought something for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah, like what? Let's let's see. You remember just throw a bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows on black paper and use the candle to light the room. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that'd be really neat. What's the wooden thing, though? Hey, this is a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Um, I actually semi, but not like enough to know anything. Not familiar at all. Not familiar at all. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributions to the positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel its permanent through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a teeny ray of vapor begins sprouting out a small hole in the top. <laughs> wow, it smells wonderful! What kind of mood is that one for? This is jasmine essential oils. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, I guess that's a good way to describe it. I chose, ja I chose jasmine because it's... For the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotion and helps you feel the flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavenly. Heavy, heaven, heavily. Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our problems? It does sound suitable, but you seem to know a lot about this, so I trust your opinion with it anyway. Jasmine? I thought that was something else. Yuri smiles gently, clearing, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches in her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are these for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I'd like you to do is write a different word on each poem. We need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What would they be used for? Well, I'm going to cut a piece of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper on the ribbon to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be wonderful? It would also catch the eyes of those passing by the room. It may be attracted to some to peek inside. That's really creative, but also paper cuts. I know, do you be so good at this, Yuri? Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with her red cheeks. Is it just me or is she more relaxed than just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing that something she enjoys. Here is a marker jar. You can write any characters you want. Yeah. I hope you once I finish cutting the ribbon. Uh, Alright. I sit on the floor together and the two of us get to work. Carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my band of handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to a desired length. Then she reaches into a bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Huh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate back pattern waved etched into it. The blade itself is a gen 
gently tinged blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, well... Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. I've had a roller coaster of an emotional day, just tell me. To each their own, you know? If you promise... If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just... So pretty. I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and the feeling of danger, maybe. What was I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. No, don't worry. I had a friend who was like obsessed with weapons and knives, and I have weird friends. Now that I'm saying all the crap out loud, I have weird friends. Okay, let me rephrase. He wasn't a friend. He was a person that was in our group. I didn't like that much, but we still let him in anyway. <laughs> You're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you are about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. <laughs> Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? You relax as her expression once again. Would you like to, would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels... Heavy. Extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I felt the point of the knife with the index of my finger. Ow! Jara! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I really touched it. It's my fault. I should have warned you. That knife is extremely sharp. I can it cut through skin like it's paper. I know. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah. She stares at it, noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah. Uh, without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Ugh. So I instantly pull my hand back. Oh, but please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head and her face is burning up. Yuri! That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How can I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it's a little weird, but tell me about surprise, but I guess she was trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're having a relaxing a little. <sighs> she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and look her index me in return. What the hell is going on? Chara, d did you just really do that? Now we're even... <sighs> you looks at me like I did something wrong. <laughs> I knew that'd be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jazz and oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Chara. You're so weird, Chara. You you're giggles. <laughs> Huh, Yuri calling me weird. I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one actually. It was a teeny cup. Look, it's already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I wish Yuri's knife cut through the room and like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the room, we lay them out side by side. Looks better than I expected and will be very effective on the door curtains. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, oh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. You know, Pinterest and all that. 10 out of 10 would recommend Pinterest because Pinterest is just my life. Yes, or YouTube, but I don't know. If this is China, then they don't have YouTube. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablet. Oh, that's right. One of the items you asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We need about we need about six cups of water to put in each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for me? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you feel the cups too much, it'll be too diluted. Taking your advice, I decided to use 
small plastic bathroom cups rather than full size glasses. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeves, putting it back over her arm. Um, nothing. Your face is a little red. Are you self-harming yourself, Yuri? Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. So, depression, self-harm. I want to say Nozuki has anxiety. And Monica's not real. I feel like it's something like that. But I don't know what Nozuki has. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me, takes it upon herself to unwrap. The tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought you would. Thought we would do something simple and look very nice. I'd like to paint a grant granite across the back. A granite across the banner, starting with the colors of the sunrise and daytime, then sunset and at nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang up on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat. What are you gonna write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling off the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colours across the banner to serve as colour guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolours feels a lot like art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. <sighs> I'm sorry if it feels too childish. No, I didn't mean it at all. I meant it's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. It is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri starts paying for a moment and thinks to herself. For me? I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple like reading. It doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Definitely an introvert. We're having, just having a friend next to me makes her feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand why she, where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where we simply start sharing the expression with someone can make you happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner and grabs an unusual paintbrush, but I move at the same time, causing my head to mum into hers. Kate! Sorry! Yuri reels back and quickly lifts my hand in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. So I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Oh, your face. There's a drop of paint on Yuri's face, isn't it? Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll just get a towel right away. I rush over and fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water. I turn to my own room and kneel back down in front of her. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with a towel. Uh, is something wrong? It's hot. I, I didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Why? Cold water would be fine. Having finished, I started to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Huh? Just a little bit longer. It, it feels really nice uh keep my hand still against yuri's neck she looks into my eyes it's an intense expression that i recognize from when she reads her book almost as if she lost in a day and felt by her own thoughts she breathes gently half through slightly parted lips what is happening is it the aroma of the jasmine always gives me this dizzy feeling yuri's gentle fingers wrap around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm and suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. <sighs> Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine, I guess. What is happening? The moment is over as soon as it begun. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsy like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, focused to ignore the event that just transferred. I... I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finished filling the night sky with the white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's pretty and natural looking. 
I think it came out better than expected. I'm really happy with the result. Yeah, me too. Are you going to be adding the layering now? <sighs> Not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but wouldn't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here than have you bring it tomorrow morning. I can do the layering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. You. Yeah. <laughs> you see, I like you're glad it's over. Was everyone to assume you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? It's not like that, I'm just tired. I'm just glad we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. <sighs> so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we would have extra time after finishing the work. Well... Mm -hmm. Yuri thinks to herself. I, I think it would be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there'd be more time as well. It's probably my fault. So I've been such a slow worker. It's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, does Yuri have any siblings? Because I feel like she's, like, self harm She said it'd be irresponsible for her not to go home and cook. I don't know if that's just, like, a, a thing in Asia and all that, but... Or is she left with younger siblings having to cook for them because her parents are dead? Speculations I have. I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all the things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounds like she really gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxing environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me. No problem, I was glad to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have any, as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over, or we can go out somewhere. Oh, I forgot you don't like going out much. I stumble with my words. Yuri simply looks bashful. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Jara. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. You are awfully close to my face. I kind of like that about you, Jara. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori! Huh? Ah. Hi, Jara! Sayori? Just now we weren't. <laughs> it's okay, Jara. I just stopped by it to say hi! Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry, but we've all been... We'll be together at fast festival tomorrow, so that's fine, right? Of course! Sorry, memes. Y yeah, so I'll see you tomorrow. Completely embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sorry, waves goodbye after her. So hurry. I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh, well, I tried staying in my room, but imagination was being really mean to me, so I had to come here to see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri. And how close you got to her. It made me really happy that you made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Siri's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Jara? Am I so I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? <laughs> it hurts too much. <laughs> 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 Everything hurts so much. <laughs> this would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sarah, you don't say that. <laughs> it's true, Jara. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Uh, Sayori! 
What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you isn't like a burden you your mind is making it out to be. It's something it's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel pain anymore. But Sari looks away. I put a hand on the shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Jara. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sari? I'm scared that, that I might like you more than you like me. Sari! It's true, isn't it? I was weak and you started to like and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Jara, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And and that's that's enough said, Sari. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sari's arms and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Why does Lee Sari nods? Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Give it to you. Sari. Ooh. What do I do? Decisions, decisions, decisions. And I guess that's a perfect cliffhanger to hang to end this episode here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you liked it, let me know in the comments below. Tell me, should I say I love you, or you'll always be my dearest friend? Anyway, Jara, see us in the next video. Sorry, guys, I'm out. I was bringing him for a race, guess hug. Bye bye. See ya. Guess what?